let me ask you to cast your mind back to when you were a young thing. Think about something that you made or produced and just picture it in your head. What did it look, sound or feel like? How did it make you feel having produced it? Triumphant, proud, inspired perhaps? I think back to when I was eight years old and what I made that I sort of uh, call, recall back when I, when I think about it is a clay model that I made of Shere Khan, complete with tiger stripes, <laughs> stumpy legs, and really weird human teeth. <laughs> if I close my eyes, I can still remember the feel of the clay and the slight sense of disappointment when the, the glaze I put on it diminished the orange of the tiger. Now, the reason why we're all thinking about these things from when we were children is because making is an act of faith. It's a, a wonderful and spectacular thing, but it's also something that we learn from. We all know the phrase, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Well, I'm here today to say, if it is broke, do fix it. And if it needs to be made, go and make it. When we're children, life is an adventure and there's opportunities for creativity everywhere we look. <coughs> Worryingly though, there is a lot of pressure on schools to produce intestable subjects. So as a consequence, creativity is cut. It's making something is messy, it's uh, time consuming, and at times it's risky. And it's very difficult to fit into a convenient slot at school. Uh, so when we're children, we uh, make things and we experiment and we learn uh, to get along with other people and about ourselves. I was lucky enough that as I was a child, I had a very creative upbringing and I, that was indulged. Unfortunately, as I, be, I moved into adult life, like so many other people, I stopped making and I stopped fixing. Maybe I got too busy, maybe life and inverted commas got in the way. I don't really know. Unfortunately, like many other uh, adults, creativity declined in adult, in adult life. And one theory of, about that is that we become more afraid of the differences between right and wrong. So we're, we're worried about getting something wrong so we don't try it. And as a consequence, we become less spontaneous and less creative. I don't really know if that was the reason why I stopped making, but what I do know is in my early 20s, I became... Uh, if I needed something, I went out and bought it. If it broke, I went and bought another one. Creativity for me was replaced by consumption. When we're children, we learn about tools. They are ex essentially extensions of ourselves. So we <laughs> if, uh, they help us do something that we are physically incapable of doing. So that might be making a mark on a piece of paper or it might be tightening a screw. Tool libraries and tools were what helped me resurrect my creative self. And it all came about with a trip to Toronto. I'd never heard of a tool library before, but my friend told me about this amazing place called the Toronto Tool Library, and while I was there, I thought I'd check it out. So I went along, and I met a young man who really inspired me. He was experiencing homelessness, and I'd been doing so for six months. But when he came into the tool library, he told them that he'd secured a job starting on the Monday and they were very keen to help him out. So they set him up as a temporary member and gave him access to the tools he needed for free. That meant so much to that young person that I could see that he was welling up from the, the generosity that they showed him. And it was there and then that I decided that I should set up the first UK tool library back here in Edinburgh. Initially in a police box on Leith Walk and now in a second location in a workshop just around the corner. Since March 2015, I've seen firsthand the power of making and the satisfaction of fixing when our members come back and tell us all their stories. Whether that's making a beautiful cabinet for a living room or widening the cat flap for a little feline friend that <laughs> just can't say no to whiskers. <laughs> Every time they do these things, people get a payoff. So they benefit from what they've made or what they've fixed but they also get that little piece of satisfaction every time that cabinet door slides open or that cat flap flaps. <laughs> now this talk is called, If It's Broke, Go Fix It. And that really does apply 
to anything that it might be. So it might be an object or a thing, but it might also be a person or a community. Whatever it is, we benefit, the fixer benefits from mending, and that becomes, uh, moves the one in their life. Samuel Beckett, the playwright, said, uh, called it failing better. He said, ever tried, ever failed. No matter, try again, fail again, but fail better. By opening up avenues for success, self-improvement, and uh, self-betterment, we are essentially embracing that opportunity to take something from everything, no matter what the outcome. There's some research uh, in the American Journal of Public Health that looks at the uh, benefits of creativity amongst people who have uh, experienced long-term illness. So they uh, basically looked at several different studies and co compared the results. It improved uh, people's view of themselves. It flipped negative thoughts to positive ones. It gave them uh, the capacity to grieve properly. And it also reduced stress and anxiety and improved their social networks. Now, specifically, that study was looking at people with long-term illnesses. But really, who in this room wouldn't benefit from a reduction in stress and anxiety in their life and an improved, wider, real social network? And that is where tool libraries come in. That's why they're so important. I have seen people in our volunteer uh, builds and our outreach programs <laughs> from entirely different environments come together and with that core goal of making something connect on a whole new level. When we have a goal to move towards, it doesn't matter what that person's background is, where they're from, we focus on that goal and we move forward together. And that's what I want to talk about. I'd like to introduce you to some folks that I met in Toronto, uh, from Toronto, uh, Portland and uh, uh, Seattle, that I met at the recent Baltimore Tool Library Conference uh, in the USA a few months ago. Talking about the, you know, the emotional and psychological benefits of creating something with your hands and part of the ethos of the tool learning library is extending those opportunities um, to people to find that joy or to be able to cultivate it if they already know that you know they like to create and to make. Build brain power! <laughs> I enjoy making things because it allows me a opportunity to express my creativity and a modicum of control over your life. No matter how stressed you are, how difficult things outside are, you're able to focus and, and, and make something or create something new. When I make things, it like empowers me to feel like it's almost like I remove the barriers to the impossible, where I can do anything. If I can do this thing, if I can build a shelf on my wall to put my radio and my CDs, you know, then what can't I do? And it's not just about having the tools to do it in the physical form, it's having the tools of the minds of like people that are in my community. And so I know that there's nothing I can't make. So just some of the language that the people were using there is really powerful. So as Lawrence said, making removes the barriers to the impossible. Wow, what a, what a wonderful way to put it. It gives you control over your life. It builds brain power. And it, uh, as Molly said at the start, she talked about finding joy in the world. When do you ever hear these days people talk about finding joy? I think that's really powerful. So. That's what our friends across the, the pond think about making. But what about a little closer to home? I'd like to introduce you to Helen. Helen is a Tool Library member. She is an inspiration to me, and she really is a force of nature. She became a member of the Tool Library in September last year uh, because she was downloading, uh, downloading, downsizing her home from a larger place to a smaller one after a long-term illness. And she wanted to have something that she could manage more, more easily. She also wanted to put her own stamp on the place, uh, which is why she joined the tool library. You see, Helen had a very special birthday coming up. She's a leap year baby, and on the 29th of February this year, she was turning 17. <laughs> so to celebrate, she wanted to have a cocktail party with all her nearest and dearest. But before she had that, she wanted to make the place just perfect for them. 
So she banned everybody from coming round for six months until she got it just right. And she borrowed a range of different equipment. She did her wallpapering, she painted the place, she hung up lights, she put up blinds, and she hung her curtains. And when she invited those folks round, she opened that door with great pride. Now, what she did say was that after years of seeing her ex-husband and her son do all the DIY around the home, it gave her a great sense of empowerment and pride in herself. And she described it as at, at 68 as feeling like she was still worthy. Now, more and more in the modern world, creativity is online and that's where our community exists. Every day we send 30 billion WhatsApp messages, yet 48% of the UK describes itself as lonely. Never have we been so close, yet so far apart. Now, the good news is, the reaction to this is the maker movement, where people are coming together in places like tool libraries to learn from each other and about themselves. When something's broke, they're fixing it. When they need to make something, they're making it. So be like Helen, and be like Molly, and Chris, and Lawrence. I want you to all think about that job that you've got waiting for you at home, that hinge that's squeaking and being annoying you, or that thing that you've always wanted to make. And I want you to grasp that opportunity and go out and fix it. If it's broke, you go fix it. And if it needs to be made, made you go make it. And if you ever find yourself at the Edinburgh Tool Library, perhaps you'll find yourself at the Edinburgh Tool Library. Thank you. <laughs>